your Storm Tracker 13 forecast first. Sponsored by Conway Medical Center. And plenty of sunshine today, but with the hot, humid weather, we've seen a few stray thunderstorms developing, especially across the PD coming out of the Midlands. Right now in Florence County, south of Florence, moving toward Coward, Scranton, Lake City. A few showers, not a whole lot of lightning with these, but there are some heavier downpours. They're all moving off to the east, and there's some more showers back to the west in Sumter County that are heading this way as well. Temperatures right now in the 90s, a lot of mid-90s out there, even along the Grand Strand. A hot day today, and it is going to stay warm overnight tonight. Tomorrow, sunshine back and we're going to heat up again. I'll let you know if we'll see any rain tomorrow coming up in a few more minutes. Coverage you can count on at 5 starts now. And the Horry County Police Department will offer autism certification training to its officers. And coming up next at 5, you'll see why. A family is getting $20.7 million in a wrongful death lawsuit against a Myrtle Beach lifeguard company. More on that coming up. And then later on on News 13 at 530, it's been two weeks now since the National Suicide Prevention Hotline went live. And tonight, find out why operators say calls have gone up. And thanks for joining us on this Monday. Bob Jubeck with you. And first tonight at 5, the family of a man who drowned in Myrtle Beach back in 2018 has won a long legal battle against Lax Beach Service. News 13's Maya Lockett right now live from Myrtle Beach with more information on that case. Maya? Bob, I am live from where a father visiting Myrtle Beach drowned three years ago in an attempt to save his children from a rip current. The family says that a lifeguard did not uh, help try to save them at all because they were busy selling, busy selling beach equipment. What was supposed to be a fun family vacation in Myrtle Beach turned tragic when Zorahan Walde drowned while attempting to save his children from a rip current. His fiance, Mesawat Abel, believes his death could have been prevented if the lifeguard on scene was not distracted. The way the beach operations were being handled in the city of Myrtle Beach and in this area were, were quite different, vastly different than then they're handled in any other municipality around the country and in, in a concerning way. Abel hired Greenville lawyer Chris Pratt and filed a lawsuit against Lax Beach Service in 2019, claiming lifeguards did not provide warning signs about the rip current or responded to her fiance's cries. The lawsuit also stated the beach service and the city had a contract where the company provides lifeguards in exchange for being able to rent out equipment. They were, were setting up a situation where these young people were serving two masters. They were serving money and then they were serving safety. And all too often you can imagine who wins out in that fight. The United States Life Saving Association sent a letter to Myrtle Beach in 2016, two years before Waldy's death, stating that a lifeguard's only job can be public safety and they will not certify any beach lifeguard that is assigned both responsibilities. You have these young lifeguards that most of them come from overseas. They're very unfamiliar with our area and they were not properly trained. Uh, they were not certified by the USLA uh, and they were put in a position to fail. We did reach out to Lax Beach Services, but did not receive a comment. Pratt also says this could possibly be the largest personal injury settlement in Horry County. The family will be receiving $20.7 million. Coming up next, next at 6, hear more from Pratt about what he hopes this case will and how it will impact Myrtle Beach's lifeguard companies. Reporting live from Myrtle Beach, Maya Lockett, News 13. Thanks a lot, Maya. New at five, take a look at this picture right here. The Florence County Sheriff's Office says the person in this picture may know something about a deadly shooting that happened at the Travel Lodge on West Palmetto Street near I-95. Tyrell Scott was shot and killed two Sundays ago at that motel. That was July 24th. Scott was 28. He was from Timmonsville. If you know the person in this picture, get in touch with your local authorities and you can take a longer look at the picture at WBTW. Com. Horry County police arrested and charged this man right here with attempted murder. Police think that Jerome Carter shot another person at a gathering on Castler's Heights Road in Longs back on July 17th. Carter has prior arrest. Now, in this case, he was arrested on Friday. He got out of jail on Saturday on a $50,000 bond. The Robinson County Sheriff's Office investigating what it calls a homicide. We're told that deputies were called this morning to the 2900 block of Old Whiteville Road that's just southeast of Lumberton. That's all we have right now on this story, but when we get more, you'll get it on air and also online. 
New at 5, the Horry County Police Department's working to further equip its officers when it comes to serving people in the community. News 13's Melissa Myers joins us live right now at the Champion Autism Network in Surfside Beach with more on this training. Melissa. Well, Bob, it's an autism awareness training, and the goal is to help the department both better understand and support people living with autism. Created by Champion Autism Network Executive Director Becky Large, Ori is the first county department to take part in the training. Surfside Beach Police and Fire Department, as well as Myrtle Beach Police, have also completed it. HCPD officers and staff will participate in training modules and exercises. They give information about how to spot and handle encounters with people with autism. Large tells me in these situations sometimes a person with autism can mimic the actions of someone on drugs but with this training officers will become more familiar with signs of autism and be able to vet the situation the whole thing is to reframe the question and think that perhaps it is somebody on the autism spectrum rather than somebody who's trying to be a troublemaker or, or whatever so if we can plant that seed that it won't escalate to what we've heard and seen on TV and, and the internet and coming up tonight at 6, hear from a parent whose son has autism and how she believes this training will help benefit his safety. For now, live in Surfside Beach, Melissa Myers, News 13. Thanks a lot, Melissa. And also, today is the first day of a new school year for many students across the PD. News 13's Jack Billier reports tonight from Greenwood Elementary School in Florence with how staffing looks at Florence One schools. Now here at Greenwood Elementary, Florence One reports zero teacher vacancies and says that's the case district-wide. Superintendent Richard O'Malley attributes that success to competitive salaries and a growing list of benefits. This will be the first year the district offers paid parental leave for teachers. Back in March, the district offered teachers a $500 gas hike rebate. O'Malley says this is the second year in a row with no teacher vacancies. And I think that's outstanding, and I think it's a direct reflection on the benefits that the board has implemented, those quality of life issues like the maternity leave and tuition reimbursement and health care reimbursement are really import, uh, important for us to not only to attract, but the hard part is to retain. Now this is the second year Florence One has operated on a year-round school schedule, which O'Malley says has been popular with teachers. In Florence, Jack Billiou, News 13. Appreciate that, Jack. And tomorrow is the first day for children in Florence District 5. That's the Johnsonville District. Also, the new year starts August 15th for all Horry County, all Dillon County, and Marlboro County schools. And students in Robinson and Scotland counties, they're going to wait until August the 29th. South Carolina's tax-free weekend returns beginning this Friday. The state sales tax will be waived through Sunday. Just in time for back to school, you can buy things without the added sales tax on things like computers, printers, classroom supplies, and a whole lot more. Last year, shoppers saved more than $18 million during the sales tax holiday. And for the full story, go to WBTW.com. Certainly back to school is exciting, but it can also be expensive. So we looked into the best ways to save as we get closer and closer to the tax-free holiday in South Carolina. First of all, you may be tempted to buy everything online, but retailers like Amazon may try to sell you bulk when you don't need bulk. You can also use price trackers like Camel 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 to see the history of pricing for any Amazon item. Also, stores like Best Buy, Bed Bath & Beyond, and Target offer additional savings for college students and teachers. You just have to register before you buy. And then there are rewards programs and some other incentives like Kohl's Cash. And make sure to read the fine print, though, to optimize savings. There can truly be a strategy for savings, especially when you look at this Kohl's Cash coupon because you have the dates where you're able to redeem, but also this 20% off coupon that is good for dates that overlap with the redemption of this Kohl's Cash. Whatever you do, make sure that you bring that supply list and then stick to it. Tomorrow on News 13 to 5, count on a lot more ways that you can save and even get free back to school supplies. Well, with the first day of the fall college semester getting closer and closer, many students will have to pay a little bit extra to eat and also live on campus this school year. News 13's Haley Brown joins us right now live at Coastal Carolina University with a breakdown of the increases that some area schools are seeing. Haley? 
For Coastal Carolina students, this upcoming school year marks the fourth consecutive year in-state tuition has not increased, but it is the first time in four years out-of-state tuition increase. CCU officials say tuition for out-of-state students went up by 4%, now coming in just over $14,200 per semester. On average, room and meal plan rates increased by 3 and roughly 7% respectively, depending on the type of plans selected. Francis Marion University, on the other hand, hasn't raised in-state or out-of-state tuition in the last four years. FMU officials also say room and board hasn't increased since 2019. The seniors who are entering into school this fall will be paying the exact same tuition that they paid when they were freshmen. Um, that means a lot to us. Coming up at 6, why Francis Marion University hasn't increased its prices. Reporting live from Conway, Haley Brown, News 13. News 13 on time traffic, sponsored by Joy Law Firm. Just call Joy. And traffic right now moving along pretty smoothly on 501 between CCU and Carolina Forest. No slowdowns right now. No slowdowns on 544 either. Drive times along the Grand Strand on 501 from Carolina Forest to CCU. That's going to take six minutes and 17 in both directions moving pretty close to normal along the Grand Strand. In and around the Florence area looking okay as well. Moving uh, no, no incidents reported through town. No problems on I-95 right now. Currently from TV Road to 76. That's going to take 10 minutes. Palmetto from 5 points to Irby Street will take six minutes and 52 from Palmetto to I-95 will take six minutes. Thanks a lot, Frank. Average gas prices have dropped 14 cents in the past week in South Carolina. That's according to GasBuddy.com, which puts the state average at 368 a gallon. That is the second best in the country. Those are high numbers, but again, compared to other states, South Carolina is low. It's also down 60 cents in the past month. The national average stands at just over 420. News 13 is your local election headquarters and Democratic gubernatorial nominee Joe Cunningham officially announced his running mate today. Cunningham chose this woman, Tally Parham Casey. She is the CEO of the Weish Law Firm in Columbia. She's also the first female fighter pilot in the South Carolina Air National Guard. She served several deployments over Iraq. Cunningham is expected to publicly announce his decision in about 30 minutes up in Greenville. Cunningham and Casey will meet Republican incumbents Henry McMaster and Pamela Ebbett in November. No Democrat has won a South Carolina governor's race since back in 1998. Once again, President Biden tested positive for COVID-19. The president's physician called it rebound positivity. That comes after the president's recovery from COVID just last week. Doctors say rebound cases have occurred in some patients who have taken the antiviral Paxlovid. The president received that treatment after his first COVID diagnosis on July the 21st. In the clinical trials of Paxlovid, less than 10% of people experience a rebound of symptoms or test positivity after completing their course of Paxlovid. The president's doctor, though, says Mr. Biden will remain in strict isolation, but he is symptom free right now and is not expected to receive another new round of treatment. Coming up next on News 13 at 5, another round of storms hitting flooded Kentucky mountain communities are just getting walloped. And this comes on top of weekend floods in Kentucky that killed at least 30 people. And except for the heat, nothing to worry about around here. News 13's local coverage you can count on continues in just a moment. From WBTW, Megan Miller, Bob Juban, and Chief Meteorologist Frank Johnson, you're watching number one News 13 at 5. Flooding in eastern Kentucky has now killed at least 30 people, and the governor there says that number will likely rise. Amber Philpot has the very latest from Hazard, Kentucky. Washed out roads and bridges are making it very difficult for first responders to access remote areas of eastern Kentucky. In some of those places, the only way out has been by air. The National Guard alone has pulled more than 400 survivors from the floodwaters. Obviously, um, we use a lot of our rotary wing helicopters to rescue people to get to areas that are maybe isolated or cut off. The threat of even more flooding has added new urgency. If things weren't hard enough on the people of this region, they're, they're getting rain right now. There is severe storm potential today 
in all of the impacted areas. That is just not right. Many residents escaped the rising water in boats. Others just swam. This cell phone video shows a man rescuing a family from a nearly submerged house. We did get hit by the flood pretty hard, but we were fortunate enough to not have any damage to any of our business assets. Restaurants like Junior's Hibachi and Heinemann have been cooking up hundreds of free meals. We had to wait till we got electricity, which was, I think, well, I think Saturday. We just wanted to come out and do something. Officials remain focused on finding additional survival Survivors. They're also working to restore electricity and make housing available before temperatures rise into the mid 90s later this week. Amber Philpott, CBS News, Hazard, Kentucky. And it's not just natural disasters on this side of the Mississippi. The McKinney Fire in California near the Oregon border now covers more than 80 square miles. And this is just one of more than 50 wildfires burning in the western U.S. right now. The volatility, volatility there of the McKinney Fire storm is fueled by high winds, also a heat wave, and a decades-long buildup of dry bush. Uh, it caught most off guard as it exploded to more than 50,000 acres in fewer than 48 hours. That fire has already destroyed homes in that area and it threatens to destroy hundreds more. When this fire came, it traveled from the top of that ridge downhill in the space of maybe 15 minutes with trees exploding. I'd never seen anything like it. It was just the most amazing, terrifying thing you've ever seen. Also, officials say 60 people were rescued were rescued from a section of the famed Pacific Coast hiking trail. And if you add up all the Western wildfires that are burning right now, they're burning an area that is larger than the size of the state of Delaware. Frank. And we've got heat across the Carolinas as well. It was hot today. It's gonna be hot again tomorrow. I'll have a look at how long that's going to last up next. And now here's Chief Meteorologist Frank Johnson with Piper 13 Real Time Radar. And another hot day today. Temperatures just about everywhere in the 90s. Many places in the mid 90s, even along the Grand Strand. Really no sea breeze today that allowed it to heat up right along the coast. And this heat is going to continue as we head through the evening hours. Temperatures right now running a little warmer than it was yesterday in a few areas that had rain at this hour. West of I-95 where we have seen a few rain showers. It's a little bit cooler, but all in all, bottom line is it's another hot day today. Satellite picture right now showing the clear to partly cloudy skies we've seen across our area. There has been some rain back to our west. This is tending to dry up as it heads our way. So while we have seen a few isolated showers and thunderstorms, mainly in the PD, not expecting much as far as rain as we head through the evening hours tonight. One cluster of showers and storms across Sumter County. Those continue to move east, so they'll be pushing into western parts of Florence County here within the next half an hour. And while we do have a little bit of rain near Scranton and Coward right now, bigger area will be moving in in about 45 minutes or so. So our forecast through the evening hours, a few isolated showers this evening. They're going to go away as the sun sets and then overnight tonight, just partly cloudy skies. It's going to be warm and muggy. Can't rule out an isolated shower late night tonight, but most likely once we get past these evening showers, it'll likely stay dry. So warm and muggy overnight tonight. Hot and humid weather will continue through the rest of the week and rain chances will generally stay low. Can't rule out an isolated storm here or there throughout the next couple of days, but no big organized storm systems heading our way. Our forecast for tomorrow showing a mixture of clouds and sunshine, mostly dry. Don't think we're gonna see much as far as rain, but can't rule out an isolated storm. Same thing as we head toward the middle part of the week, staying hot and humid on Wednesday. Can't rule out a scattered shower or a thunderstorm, but our rain chances will stay fairly low. That'll continue through the rest of the week. By the time we hit the weekend, our rain chances will be a little bit higher. Our forecast for tonight, partly cloudy, warm and muggy, mid 70s for our overnight lows tonight, and temperatures will be slow to fall through the evening hours. Tomorrow, expect a mixture of clouds and sunshine, hot and humid, low to middle 90s, very similar temperatures to what we saw today. Can't rule out an isolated thunderstorm, but most of us will stay dry for tomorrow. At the beaches tomorrow, winds out of the southwest will be a little breezy at 10 to 20, waves running 2 to 3 feet, surf temperatures at 84 degrees. Seven-day forecast looking at the hot weather continuing throughout the rest of the week. Slight chance for that shower or thunderstorm tomorrow and Wednesday, likely staying dry Thursday and Friday. As we head toward the end of the week, I think the sea breeze is going to be stronger Thursday and Friday, and that should prevent us from really getting too hot toward the end of the week. Rain chances return for the weekend. Pretty good chance for those scattered storms both Saturday and Sunday and that'll keep temperatures down as well. All right sounds good. Thanks Frank and we'll be back in a minute. Well the time is 526 so it means time to check in with Annette to see what's next at 530. Annette. 
Bob, coming up next on News 13 at 530, we'll tell you why pediatricians urge parents to get their kids vaccines before they start school. And there's been a rise in calls to South Carolina's only suicide prevention hotline center, how the center is adapting to the increase. Thank you, Annette. Like many countries, Japan has been hit with a heat wave. It's 100 degrees over there uh, earlier on Monday. Same thing tomorrow to help dogs stay cool. A Tokyo clothing maker teamed up with a veterinarian to create a wearable fan. That battery operated fan attaches to a special harness, which helps circulate cool air, air around the animal's body. The cost for that thing is $74. That does it for us. Annette's back at 530 in a minute. Count on at 5.30 starts now. First up tonight on News 13 at 5.30, pediatricians are preparing for the worst as some students head back to the classroom. Our Giovanna Boggins talked to hospitals about preparations. Plus, the new 988 number has been in service for about two weeks, offering health care services to South Carolinians. Capitol reporter Jason Raven has how the call center is operating. And later tonight on News 13 at 6, a lifeguard service in Myrtle Beach is being forced to pay up after losing a lawsuit. News 13's Maya Lockett explains. And thanks for joining us for more local coverage. You can count on. I'm Annette Pegler. First up at New F530, some students in the PD are back in the classroom today. This morning, students packed the buses for Marion and Darlington County Schools, as well as Florence Districts 1 through 3. Now, this is the first semester that Florence District 4 will be consolidated into Florence 1. And then tomorrow, Florence School District 5 will head back to the classroom. After that, the next districts to head back on August 15th include Dillon Districts 3 and 4, as well as Marlboro and Horry County Schools. On the 15th, News 13 will have live team coverage all throughout the morning as students head back. Our morning crew will be out on Horry County campuses starting at 5 in the morning. It's more local coverage you can count on. And leading up to the semester, parents are scrambling to make sure their kids are safe. For children born during the pandemic, this year may be their first year in daycare around other children. News 13's Giovanna Boggins spoke to a pediatrician who explains what parents should be aware of about their child's health this year. This may be the first time newborns to three-year-olds are getting exposed to bacteria and viruses because they haven't been out in public. The younger children born during the pandemic who have not had a lot of exposure may have what doctors call a naive immune system. They have seen younger children getting into daycare with more illnesses such as routine colds, RSV, and strep throat. To combat the sickness, pediatricians recommend parents ensure their children have all of their vaccines and are attending their yearly checkups, sometimes checkups even every couple of months. Pediatricians say children who have already been in school and are up to date on their vaccines will have stronger immunity as they return to school. But parents should not be alarmed because doctors say it is normal. Also understand that, especially if they've never been into a daycare setting or preschool setting, it is common for some kids to get frequent upper respiratory infections such as colds uh, more frequently than children who have been exposed to some of those things in the past. The busiest time of the year for pediatrics is the summertime as kids are returning to school and getting their physicals. Now, pediatricians do say they have seen an influx of patients as kids are returning to in-person learning who opted for virtual learning in the last two years. Reporting in Myrtle Beach, Giovanna Boggins, News 13. Thanks, Giovanna. Well, this man has been sentenced to life in prison, convicted of murder and possession of a weapon during a violent crime. Darrell Land of Blythewood killed Arnold Juice Bennett back in 2019. Land is convicted of shooting and killing Bennett, then dumping his body in a wooded area off Old Sanders Road near Robert Edge Parkway. Bennett was last seen on August 4th. He was reported missing just days later on the 7th. Two North Myrtle Beach City employees found Bennett's body. And your local crime tracker tonight, more people were hurt and killed this July than in any other month in more than a year and a half. That's according to a News 13 crime analysis in Darlington, Dillon, Florence, Horry, Marion, and Marlboro counties. There were 42 shootings this past July, surpassing the year's previous record of 38 set in April. Of those shootings, 35 people were hurt and 13 were killed. In July, only six days didn't see a shooting in our area. In 2022, there have been 205 shootings and 73 deaths in our coverage area. All but three of those shootings have been solved. You can find much more information on those in this story on WBTW.com. Across the state, an inmate who killed four people in two states is off of South Carolina's death row. This comes after a federal appeals court judge ruled the judge who sentenced Quincy Allen to die 
did not consider his abusive childhood or mental illness. With this appeal, South Carolina's death row has now been cut nearly in half since the start of 2011 when the state carried out its last execution. Allen was sentenced to death in 2005 for killing a woman he picked up on the street and a man at the restaurant where he worked. While on the run, he killed two more people in Surrey, North Carolina. Allen's appeal now brings the number of death row inmates down to 34. Whether the state can start putting inmates to death again could be determined this week at a trial in Columbia where lawyers for several death row prisoners are arguing the electric chair as well as the newly established firing squad are cruel and unusual punishments. And News 13's count on health coverage tonight, we hear about a blood shortage all too often, but we don't always get to hear from who it is directly impacting. News 13's Taylor Maresca got the chance to have a one-on-one -on -one with a mother who is grappling with the effects of leukemia in her two-year-old son. Luca is like every other young boy. He loves to play golf, watch videos on his iPad, and play with his Buzz Lightyear toys. But Luca's day-to-day -day is a lot different. He is receiving a variety of different chemotherapy drugs to kind of help with the effects of what a chemotherapy regimen does to a two and a half year old's little body. Six months ago, Luca was diagnosed with B-cell leukemia, a life-threatening cancer. Luca is in active treatment right now. He's had several blood transfusions as well as platelet transfusions and also receives um, a variety of blood products um, to ensure that he can fight anything that's out there. One day, Luca woke up with a high fever. He was taken straight to the doctor. He now has a port, um, which most cancer um, patients go through, and so it's to access um, him, it's underneath his skin, so it's then keeping a two and a half year old calm still um, and just um, distracted for that time. She says the challenges are worth it. It's, it's life saving. Luca couldn't meet me with his mom this morning. He's actually in MUSC today with my husband and they're at the clinic and he is receiving two uh, chemotherapy treatments. And how is he doing? He's going in strides. Each phase comes with its own um, you know, set of obstacles, but he, we just had a, an amazing golf tournament last weekend and he was out and he was fist pumping and high-fiving. As for Holmes and her husband, they are overwhelmed with support from their community. And I think the most impactful thing is having them reach out to us and say, hey, you're not alone. We've got you. We've got Luca. Holmes told me that she has nothing but gratitude for those who donate. She said, quote, if you're able to, you're giving life. And families like ours greatly appreciate that gift of life, end quote. Reporting in Myrtle Beach, Taylor Maresca, News 13. Such a touching story. Thanks, Taylor. Sticking with Health Tonight, DHEC is rolling out a new program to help new mothers. They're launching the postpartum digital visit pilot program in the PD. The new program would make it easier for new mothers to sign up for care. Initially, mothers enrolled for DHEC's postpartum newborn home visit program through a physical mailer. Now the new program allows parents to sign up through telehealth service. DHEC said when they were using paper mailers, they received less than 10% of them back. The postpartum newborn home visit program is available for families at no extra cost, and DHEC says registering now takes less than five minutes. Well, time now for a first look at your forecast, and Frank, well, we got through the weekend. Some scattered storms cooled us down, but it was still so too hot. What's the week looking like for us this week? Hey, it's going to stay hot through the first week of August, and with that heat and humidity, we have seen a few isolated showers and thunderstorms. Most of us have been dry so far today. One little shower there in Marion County, another one in lower parts of Florence County. You notice the, uh, the yellow box that just popped up there with this storm. Uh, that one right there coming into lower Florence County, that's a severe thunderstorm warning. Could see a winds to 60 miles per hour with this storm. It's moving off to the east. It's heading toward uh, Cowards, Granton, Lake City area. Should stay south of Florence, so that's the good news. But be prepared for a strong thunderstorm pushing into uh, parts of Florence County. And it's hot outside. Temperatures in the 90s, many places in the mid-90s right now, even along the Grand Strand. And it will stay warm and humid through the evening hours tonight. Not expecting a whole lot of rain for tonight. And tomorrow we heat back up again. I'll have a look at how hot it's going to get tomorrow coming up in a few more minutes. 
Thanks, Frank. Sticking with the heat, Scotland County has been marked as one of the nation's most vulnerable areas for heat when it comes to housing and transportation. That's according to a map recently released by federal agencies. Scotland re ranked ninth on that list. Allendale County in South Carolina ranked sixth. The map breaks down vulnerabilities into four categories, socioeconomic status, household composition and disability, minority status and language and housing and transportation. The map is one of multiple tools launched Friday as part of the Biden administration's rollout of heat.gov. Well, new tonight, fire officials in Winston-Salem say they aren't sure what caused the Winston Weaver fertilizer plant fire earlier this year. This comes after both the city and insurance company investigators finished their investigations. The fire department's report says there wasn't enough evidence to determine the cause and origin of the fire. It happened January 31st when, fire, when the fire broke out at the Winston Weaver fertilizer plant. It burned for several days and prompted a voluntary evacuation zone around the plant. Officials were concerned about the ammonium nitrate inside the plant that could have exploded. Well, happening now, calls to South Carolina's only suicide prevention hotline call center have increased. Starting two weeks ago, you can dial 988 to get mental health help. Our Capitol reporter Jason Raven tells us how the call center is adapting to this increase. A Mental Health America of Greenville County says during the first two weeks of 988 being operational, calls from South Carolina to the National Suicide Prevention Hotline have just about doubled. Now, all of this while the center and nonprofit lack steady state funding to boost staffing numbers. Now, Jennifer Piver is the executive director, and she says they are looking at trends and data they've gotten during the last two weeks to utilize their staff in the best way possible. Now, according to Piver before the switch, they were answering about 80% of the calls coming in. Now that's gone down just a little bit. Now calls that go unanswered in South Carolina are routed to a backup center in other parts of the country. Now Piver says they may not be familiar with the state's resources and their goal is to keep every call in South Carolina. People don't wait that long for the transfer to happen. There are hundreds of workers in the US waiting to take your call. But I encourage people, if you're in distress and you call, please stay on the phone. Someone really is there to answer it. Just just, just wait with us if you don't get us. There are state mental health resources you can call directly as well. The State Department of Mental Health has a mobile crisis hotline and you can reach crisis clinicians at 833-364-2274. Doesn't matter what county you live in. In Columbia, Jason Raven, News 13. Thanks, Jason. News 13 is your local election headquarters in South Carolina. Gubernatorial candidate Joe Cunningham has chosen his running mate for lieutenant governor. Cunningham has tapped civil litigator and former Air National Guard fighter pilot Tally Casey. Cunningham made this announcement this morning ahead of the formal announcement today in Casey's hometown of Greenville. Cunningham says Casey's military service, legal savvy, and the fact that she's a woman make her the right fit. In North Carolina now, the State Board of Elections has unanimously voted to recognize the Green Party as a new political party. This represents a reversal of the previous decision to reject the party's petition while the board investigates their petition for potential fraud. The board's legal counsel announced today the party had enough signatures to earn recognition. The Green Party now faces another challenge as an ongoing legal battle with the party led them to miss the July 1st deadline to submit nominees. Coming up later tonight on News 13 at 6, the Horry County Police Department is receiving special training. Melissa Myers has comment from officers taking that course. But first, Senate Democrats are hoping to bring their inflation reduction bill to the floor for a vote this week. News 13's Washington correspondent Alexandra Lamone has that story. And you're taking a live look out over the Myrtle Beach boardwalk. The heat continues, unfortunately, for us folks. News 13 at 530 will be back in just a few minutes. It's more local coverage you can count on. WBTW, Annette Pagler, Megan Miller, and Chief Meteorologist Frank Johnson. You're watching number one, News 13 at 530. Welcome back to News 13 at 530 in Washington. President Biden's ambitious plans to invest in fighting climate change and lowering health care costs appear closer to becoming a reality. Washington correspondent Alexandra Lamone joins us live, or she joins us now to discuss the legislation and where things stand. 
The Inflation Reduction Act aims to invest $400 billion over 10 years in fighting climate change and lowering health care costs for many Americans by allowing Medicare to negotiate prescription drug prices. There's an awful lot of good stuff in this bill. West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin says he's finally on board with what's essentially a smaller version of President Biden's Build Back Better plan. It's a balanced bill. This is an energy security bill. Senator Manchin is supporting the legislation in part because it would pay for itself and it would reduce the deficit by raising taxes on the richest Americans and corporations. Republicans oppose the package. Same Democrats who said that a $1.9 trillion spending spree would not cause inflation are now saying, listen to this, it's a good idea to raise taxes, kill jobs, attack American energy. But there's still uncertainty. Arizona Democratic Senator Kirsten Sinema has remained largely silent, and Democrats worry the proposed tax hikes could jeopardize her support. For now, the White House is deferring to Senator Manchin to win her over. So I leave it to him. Reporting in Washington, Alexandra Limon, News 13. Thanks, Alexandra. Sticking with the Senate veterans, advocates and volunteers gathered outside Capitol Hill today demanding senators take up a vote on the promise to address comprehensive toxics or the PACT Act. The group is demanding action after the Senate stalled the bill after failing to pass an amendment last week. Comedian John Stewart has been demonstrating with veterans. Ground Zero in New York City was really a burn pit. It was the original burn pit. It was all these hazardous materials that had been lit by jet fuel. And the only difference between 9-11 and Ground Zero and the burn pits that these men and women face is that that burn pit was from an attack. Our country did it to them. Supporters say the bill is recognition from Congress that veterans were exposed to toxic substances while serving their country and are suffering as a result of it. Opponents say the legislation would grant benefits to veterans whose conditions may not have anything to do with their military service. Frank. And with the heat today, we are seeing a few showers and thunderstorms. I'll let you know if this rain chance will be back again tomorrow. Up next. And now, here's Chief Meteorologist Frank Johnson with Piper 13 Real-Time Radar. Hot, humid weather today, and our weather is going to stay on the hot side as we head through the evening hours. Our forecast this evening along the Grand Strand, partly cloudy skies. Temperatures in the 80s slowly falling through the 80s, so it will stay warm and muggy. Can't rule out a stray thunderstorm, but the better chance is inland across the PD. There has been some rain back to our west across northern Georgia today. That is falling apart, but we do have some thunderstorms that have developed a little bit closer that we're keeping an eye on right now. One strong storm pushing into western parts of Florence County. We've seen a few isolated showers here or there. Uh, there's actually a severe thunderstorm warning for this storm that's moving into Florence County in and around the Olanta area, about to push into Coward, Scranton, Lake City. Uh, and this is all moving on off to the east. Could see winds gusting up to 60 miles per hour. So these are gusty thunderstorms pushing in. And that severe thunderstorm warning for parts of Florence and Williamsburg County goes until six o'clock tonight. All this action is south of Florence and since it's moving pretty much due east is going to stay south of Florence. Temperatures outside right now in the 90s. Most of us in the low to middle 90s even along the Grand Strand. Not much of a sea breeze today. That's keeping it hot and the few areas where we've seen a few showers around are a little bit cooler right now. Our forecast through the evening hours scattered showers and thunderstorms over the next couple of hours. They'll be winding down and overnight tonight we're likely going to stay dry. Partly cloudy skies and it will stay warm and muggy tonight as well. So warm, muggy, hot, humid weather will continue through the rest of the week. And even though we are going to see a stray thunderstorm each afternoon, our rain chances through Friday will stay low. Out in the tropics, things still nice and quiet heading into August and approaching the peak of hurricane season. Nothing going on right now. The tropical waves moving across the Caribbean are all going off to the west without developing and not expecting any tropical storm formation over the next five days. So things should stay quiet out there in the tropics. For us tomorrow, a mixture of clouds and sunshine likely going to stay dry. Can't rule out an isolated shower or a thunderstorm tomorrow. Same thing as we head toward Wednesday. Most of us will stay dry, but just a slight chance for a thunderstorm, and it is going to stay pretty hot through the rest of the week as well. Our forecast for tonight, partly cloudy, warm and muggy tonight. Any of those showers and storms this evening 
will be going away as the sun sets. Temperatures in the mid 70s for most of us for our overnight lows. Tomorrow we'll see a mixture of clouds and sunshine, hot and humid. High temperatures in the low to middle 90s, very similar to what we saw today. Can't rule out a stray thunderstorm, but most of us are going to stay dry tomorrow, and that'll be the case through the rest of the week. Rain chances staying low tomorrow and Wednesday, likely staying dry Thursday and Friday. As we head toward Thursday, Friday, we'll likely see a stronger sea breeze. That'll cool it down a little bit right along the coast, and then heading into the weekend, rain chances are back. Looks like a pretty good chance for thunderstorms both Saturday and Sunday. Frank, thanks so much. Time now to take a look at the top trending stories on WBTW.com. Our Maya Lockett will have more on number two. Coming up at six, a family gets more than $20 million in a lawsuit against a lifeguard service in Myrtle Beach. And you can find more trending stories on the News 13 mobile app. It's free from your app store. It's more local coverage you can count on. And News 13's Bob Jubeck is here now with what we're working on at six. Hey, Bob. Hey, working on a lot, Annette, and that includes concerns from college students about housing. News 13's Haley Brown will take a look at those concerns at six with a live report from Coastal Carolina. Plus, News 13's Jack Billu has you covered on the first day of school in Florence County as some students enter a classroom for the first time ever. And here is a live look over Little River on a Monday. We'll be back at 6, but Annette's going to be back with more local coverage you can count on at 5.30 right after the break.